Hey guys, this is Victor, and today I want to speak to you about something pretty crazy. We're going to be fact-checking Gary Brecca. And uh, if you haven't heard about him or seen him, we're going to be talking about his discussions on deuterium, water, hydrogen, energy, and mitochondria. And uh, for some of you, you may not care about this, but it's pretty important information. I actually have another really good video on all this stuff, but Gary Brecca, I don't know if you've seen him. He's recently just been blowing up all over the internet, thanks to Dana White, the president of the UFC, promoting Gary Brecca. Uh, and he was just on Joe Rogan, and he's just everywhere. So I went and took a look, and I was like, wow, this is crazy. I have to comment on this. And I'm not the first one to comment on it. So anyway, Gary Brecca is completely uh, out of his mind, it seems, and I, I don't understand why he's spewing complete nonsense about deuterium, water, hydrogen, etc. Uh, it's really kind of nuts. So I'm going to walk you through it. Before I do that, let me give you a really basic overview, a basic introduction to mitochondria. These are like, you know, the energy cells of your body. Um, they take in oxygen, like right, we're breathing in oxygen, and they burn sugar. They also burn fat. You also often don't see this, but I talk about this in other videos. So that's the that's the input, your oxygen and your other nutrients um, that get fed into the mitochondria, and then it outputs CO2, ATP, which is the energy that our cells use, and water. So your body actually produces a lot of water. And a real key point about this production that I've talked about in some other videos is the quality of the hydrogen, the type of hydrogen. And there's something called deuterium, which is heavy hydrogen. It's hydrogen that actually has a neutron in it. And again, I explain this in other videos. So if you want to dive deep into that, go check out my video on fat versus cancer, where I break that down. I talk about the normal hydrogen or protium, deuterium, and even tritium. Uh, and again, I explain how and why the heavy hydrogen, it actually breaks up the engines in the mitochondria. Anyway, getting back to the point here, Gary Brecka, fact or fiction, wow, he's putting out gross misinformation, completely fake science. Uh, looks like he's making up stuff on the fly. I don't understand why nobody has stopped him or informed him, and I don't understand why he's doing it. There are other people, actually, Chris Masterjohn recently did a great video to break apart uh, Gary Brecker's discussions on a bunch of other stuff that is, again, complete nonsense. And what makes it really dangerous is that, of course, there is a lot of truth or some information that is correct, but then he just goes completely off the rails saying things that are false and potentially very dangerous for your health. And if nothing else, it's really just dumbing us all down. You gotta know your basic chemistry. Not, not that you have to know, but you don't wanna believe in completely made up fake chemistry and physics and biochemistry uh, because somebody's trying to sell you something. That is not cool. And so this is why I wanna put out the correct information. Here's something very so let's listen to him. It is deuterium depleted. Deuterium depleted. If you really want to have some fun, look up deuterium depleted water. Deuterium depleted water. Okay, so false statement. He opened this up by saying that the ketogenic diet is deuterium depleted and this is just absolutely false again i go into this in detail the ketogenic diet can be low in deuterium which is the heavy hydrogen it can be deuterium depleted but any diet can be the key point is you have to choose quality foods quality fats especially they provide a lot of good hydrogen but his statement that ketogenic diet is deuterium depleted is absolute nonsense because you can certainly have a bad ketogenic diet that is heavy in deuterium. All right, so I'm going to let him continue. So first of all, what is deuterium? First of all, let's say that I'm going to take a hydrogen and another hydrogen. I'm going to bind it to an oxygen molecule, and I'm going to create molecule of water, okay? And that's what happens. Our body grabs a hydrogen, grabs another hydrogen, 
bind to, to an oxygen molecule, and I create one molecule of water. I'm going to take that molecule of water, and I'm going to put it into the mitochondria. False. Okay, so he actually has this completely backwards. Our body doesn't build water and feed it to mitochondria. As I just mentioned before I started this, the mitochondria is creating water. Water is an output, not an input. So this is uh, I, I just completely ridiculous. I don't know why he's saying this. Right? I'm going to put it into the mitochondria of the cell. The mitochondria of the cell is then going to use that to produce ATP. Completely false. The mitochondria is not using water to create ATP. It is using hydrogen that it gets from sugars, fats, and other food sources. And of course, it's also using other nutrients. You can't produce ATP with just hydrogen and oxygen, right? You need, it has other components in it. The molecule is more complex than that. So again, complete nonsense. I don't know why he's saying this. So what is deuterium and why is depleting deuterium important? Well, deuterium is heavy water. So what False again, deuterium is not heavy water. Heavy water has deuterium in it. Deuterium is heavy hydrogen. This is an important point because deuterium is not only found in water. Deuterium is found in fats and many others. It's found everywhere, but only a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of hydrogen in the universe is actually deuterium. Most of it is not deuterium. When I'm assembling these water molecules, I take a hydrogen and hydrogen, bring them together with an oxygen, okay? And I'm going to create this water molecule. Well, if I were to look at the electrical orbit of a hydrogen molecule, it's got a proton and it's got an electron. So again, there's another false statement. The electrical orbit does not have an electron and a proton. That's ridiculous. He'll actually correct himself by saying the proton is in the middle, but only electrons are in the orbit. We have protons and neutrons in the center uh, for all the atoms in the universe that we know about. Okay, proton in the center, electron in the Although when I bring it together, when the body is creating this water, if it's not in a deuterium depleted state, what happens is one of the hydrogen picks up an extra neutron. So this is the most bizarre, perhaps the most bizarre thing. Hydrogen can't pick up a neutron, okay? Hydrogen exists in the universe either with a neutron or without it, or sometimes with two neutrons in the case of a hydrogen that we call tritium. But it exists that way already. It doesn't pick it up in normal biological process processes. There is no biological process on the planet that we have ever found that can have hydrogen pick up a neutron. No, maybe our particle colliders can do it, you know, maybe in the heart of a star or something, but you know, you, you cannot uh, just casually have hydrogen pick up a neutron, especially when you're um, creating water or when water is being created as an output from mitochondria or other biological processes. Hydrogen never, ever picks up a neutron. Completely false information. And pretty basic chemistry, pretty basic physics. And while this may not sound like a big deal, it makes that hydrogen molecule enormous. Again, completely false nonsense. It does not change the size of the hydrogen atom, but it doubles the weight. Okay, the size stays exactly the same. You've got a proton and neutron in the nucleus. The neutron has no charge, so the electron stays in the same exact orbit, which is already very far away from the nucleus. Uh, there's no change in size, but a doubling in weight. And this is the problem with deuterium. When we have this, again, heavy hydrogen, it's twice as heavy as normal hydrogen. So I, I, can't, I don't even know where he gets this from. 
And I don't know why he felt the need to say things like this. It's just nuts. See the size of this hydrogen molecule? And the size of this hydrogen molecule? Okay. When you have an imbalance in the two hydrogens, this is called deuterium. This <laughs> is called not. deuterium. False. False. And you heard it here first because this is going to come become very commonplace in the scientific literature very, very soon. This is, again, absolutely bizarre nonsense. Deuterium has been well understood and known for many, many decades. Uh, probably longer than I've been alive. Um, and so it's not new. There's nothing new about it. And what he's talking about here, this is, there, there is no such thing called deuterium water. Um, there's deuterium depleted water, meaning water that has less deuterium, but the water itself is not deuterium. Again, deuterium is heavy hydrogen, not large hydrogen, not water with an imbalance of hydrogen. This is all complete fake pseudoscience. I can't even call it pseudoscience. It's just fake nonsense. It has nothing, no relation to the actual science. So what happens when I take a water molecule in that has an oxygen molecule like this, a huge hydrogen like this, and a normal size hydrogen like that? Well, when a deuterium molecule enters the Krebs cycle, it breaks that motor apart. So again, false, false, false. There's no such thing as deuterium molecule, right? It's a deuterium atom, the hydrogen atom. Uh, we call it deuterium if it's carrying one neutron. Um, and it's not water that we're feeding to the mitochondria or into the Krebs cycle. No, we're feeding oxygen, sugars, fats. They're getting broken down. And then the, the hydrogen atoms themselves are getting fed into the ATP uh, engine that creates the ATP or the ATP enzyme or protein, etc. Uh, but what he's saying here is completely false nonsense. Uh, and I'm only listening to less than three minutes, and I've got like 10 absolute ridiculous comments. I'll let this run for like another minute. So, in other words, you can reduce the intracellular energy by actually allowing deuterium water to get into your cells. And so when you are on a ketogenic diet, you actually are eating the lowest inflammatory, lowest um, production of deuterium water diet that you can, that you can eat. So, so in other words. The, it, <laughs> so to summarize, um, there's so many false statements. Again, uh, this thing about the ketogenic diet is just complete nonsense. What he's saying, right? There are not these deuterium molecules. The, the great potential of the, of the ketogenic diet is that it's high fat, and fat can be an excellent sauce, source of, um, of normal hydrogen or protein and to help keep you away from deuterium. But again, as I said before, it's easy to have a really unhealthy ketogenic diet. Any diet can be low in deuterium. The key point is to choose healthy quality foods Stay away from GMOs, which are especially high in deuterium. Uh, and again, it's not about, we're not creating it. There's no hydrogen picking up a neutron. It's out there. And then in nature, unfortunately, uh, the things that are done more unnaturally, like GMOs, et cetera, they tend to gather and hold on to more deuterium. And then if we eat that, we get more deuterium in our body, and it's pretty bad. Again, watch my other video from several years ago. I, I explained that pretty well. And just go listen to anybody else if you want to learn about mitochondria uh, and deuterium and hydrogen and water and energy, ATP, etc. So this is, I'm putting this out there because uh, Gary Brecka is just everywhere right now. He's just blowing up all over the internet and spewing complete nonsense. And so we've got to keep this in check. Uh, and of course, he's trying to sell something based on uh, this false information. And uh, I probably won't do any more videos. I just want to get this out there as an alert because I was very concerned. Uh, and I, I mean, look, you just got to laugh, you know, and I'd be curious, hopefully somebody's going to get him to fact check himself. Someone's going to say, hey man, <laughs> you need to stop this. You know, we want to get truth out there. We need to educate people especially in the U.S., you know, our education is already pretty terrible, and uh, especially in science, and that just makes us more vulnerable. So uh, let's get the truth out there. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you found this uh, fun, useful, and I hope it helps to make you a little bit healthier. Have a good day.